The other thing you mentioned was the monolith and the winedor. Monolith is a big refrigeration style electronic humidor. Um, they make several different sizes. I was going to buy this one called the 1200C. It holds up to 1200 cigars. You can store entire boxes in there. Not only does it regulate humidity, but it also regulates temperature, which is very important if you're going to maintain a big collection. All right. Uh, if you're in a climate zone where it gets very hot or very cold or it changes frequently, you've got to get some sort of, if you're going to store a lot of cigars, that's the problem with Boveda bags. They don't maintain temperature. So really, I've been okay so far, but down the line, you know, I have to constantly move them in the summer and the winter and make sure they're in a room that stays pretty much the same all year round, uh, which there is no room like that, but, you know, as best I can, and so far it's been okay, but to really maintain them properly, I need an electronic humidor. So I was going to buy this thing, the monolith. Uh, it's a beautiful unit. Problem with it is, in a, in a store, it retails for $2,400. Uh, you can get it online. I found it online for about $1,700. That was a few years ago. I don't know. They may be selling it cheaper now. But usually those kind of units are very expensive. Therefore, being the ingenious creatures that human beings are, somebody came up with the idea of a winador. And I've always wondered this too. I always used to look at those wine uh, refrigerator, wine bottle refrigerator type uh, things and say, why can't I make a humidor out of this? The answer is, you can. You can. I always said, you know, my the reason I didn't was because, I, you know, I don't have the, the cool drawers and everything, and it doesn't regulate humidity. That's the problem. But people started saying, you know what, it controls temperature. Uh, they make versions that use thermoelectric. Uh, you, you can't get a compressor one. That's like a refrigerator. That'll ruin your cigars. That thing basically maintains food by, you know, methods of dehydration and humidity, and it, it wreaks havoc on cigars. But the thermoelectric one does not. So what people did was they went out, and a wine, by the way, a fantastic, fantastic wine uh, storage refrigerator cost two, three hundred dollars. I found the one I want for two hundred bucks. So you can see where I'm going with this. You're, you're, uh, to answer your question, I'm not getting the monolith anymore. I'm actually going to build a wine door. I'm glad you mentioned both. Um, and here's how you do it. You go out and you buy yourself uh, a, a uh, wine storage thing and make sure it's thermoelectric. Then, this is going to be a separate video, so I don't have the websites or anything, but I will tell you, there is a guy who all he does is make custom cedar shelves and drawers for dozens of different types of wine refrigerators. It's an awesome, awesome idea. And I hope he's making a lot of money because it's a great idea. You get your wine fridge and he, and he lists all the different models of wine refrigerators that he makes these shelves for. So you go to his website and you say, well, you know, depending on what, I, for me personally, I have a lot of boxes, much more than I have singles. So I would probably get two drawers, maybe one large one, one small one for singles, and just the looks to make, you know, and then the rest shelves to put boxes in. Now you got your wine fridge, and, and for me, I did the total. For I would need four shelves and two drawers. My total came to under a hundred bucks for all cedar drawers, all the hardware, everything needed to install these right into the wine. So based on what you have, a lot of boxes or a lot of singles, you decide what you need. For me, I have a good amount of singles, but a lot of boxes. So I would basically need more shelves than drawers. And drawers look nice, and I do have a lot of singles, so I would get two drawers and four shelves. They also make the drawers in different sizes, like thinner ones that fit two per slot, or bigger ones. Anyway, so you go to the site, you look up your model of a wine refrigerator that you want. They're all different companies, all different brands. He makes literally, for dozens, he'll make the things fit. Uh, and then I pick what I need. So I made up my order. I didn't order it yet, but my order comes to under a hundred bucks for two drawers and four shelves, all cedar wood, all handmade, ready to install. Unbelievable. Under a hundred bucks. So the wine fridge I wanted, uh, I found for three hundred, but it was on sale for two, and the shelves cost under a hundred. So now for about three hundred dollars, I have everything I need, temperature controlled cedar shelves, good storage. The only thing is, is it does not regulate humidity. 
there are a couple of different ways people are going about this. There's, ta-da, the Boveda bag method, where you take a ton of Boveda bags and put them all in the thing. You know, you put, I don't know, maybe like uh, two or three bags per drawer, shelf, or however many it takes to get up to your desired humidity. For me, I would want it at 69.70. That would be perfect. Uh, it would be more for storing long term, so 69-ish, you know? Uh, so there's that method, and I know from experience that if you use enough Boveda bags, they're going to last for a good six months or so. The problem is for a big space like that, you're going to need a lot of Boveda bags. So every six, seven months, you're going to be paying that fee to restock your Boveda bags. Also, cheaper, you can get the crystal beads and make buckets of them and put them all around and fill those with water. Some people say it works great, other people not so much, you know, but I don't know. For me, I would want the whole thing to be run just like the monolith. Electronic touch button requires a little extra work, but it's possible. You can go online and get an electronic humidification unit, top grade, for, you know, somewhere between $150, $200 for a good one. You don't want one for 50 bucks. The thing's going to break down, you know. You want the kind, the industrial kind, that if you go into a bodega or a, a corner deli and they have a, a cigar cabinet maintained properly and they have a, a metal, you know, um, it's, it's like a steel looking thing. Anyway, that's an electronic humidification unit. I would get probably, probably two, two of them and get this, put like one up top, one up bottom. And the cool thing is a wine fridge has a plug to drain any spillage or water. That plug needs to be sealed up to keep the humidity in. But the good thing about it is it's a hole that you can run wires through before you plug it up. So I would take my electronic units, put them in there, run the power cables through there, and then plug up my hole with silicon. That's it. Now, for about $500, I have what would have cost me at a store $2,500 or online $1,700, not including shipping of that giant monolith, uh, which costs about $250 to get it to your house. So. You save a ton of money, a quarter of the price, easy. Uh, you know. And people report, some people like, oh, mine's not working so great. My, I think the main problem people are having is they're not waiting long enough for the humidity to build up. They're impatient. They think the humidity is going to... First of all, the wood is dry. Need, that needs a, a good week to soak up humidity. You know, whatever cigars you have in there. If you only have a few cigars, it's not going to, you know, you need to pack in to have it probably like a humidor, half full. You know, the, the wood needs to be humidified, everything that's in there. But I think it's a fantastic idea. And uh, in the near future, once I land a job, I'll definitely build one of these things. And I'll go over it step by step with you guys on the Dr. Joe Show. Uh, you know, I see a lot of... You, you know, my, my Wine Adore videos on uh, YouTube, but not too many good ones on how to build them step by step, where they got the parts, how to install this, that. And I'm going to do it with the electronic humidification unit version. I even, if I can, would like to, because I'm a computer guy and I, I build computers, you know, they have these little computer fans. And they're great for moving a, a small amount of air around. Uh, which is, you know, usually in big humidor cabinet type things, they have air, ventil air, air movement, you know, to keep the cigars from getting stagnant. And uh, basically, I think I want to take a computer power supply and, you know, hide that somewhere and rig up a bunch of these fans and put a couple, you know, unless the humidification units come with their own fans, which they probably do. So I probably won't need that. The thing, the winder doors come with lighting already so you don't need to worry about that if you want it to look fancy and all that stuff and um, it's a lot of fun I think it'll be a lot of fun to build one and, and fire it up and test it out you know I, the only thing I would like to figure out how to do is to make a little control for the humidity and have it on the outside you know um, probably if you're daring enough and you don't mind you know you know if you're good at this type of thing take a Dremel tool and cut out a little square in the front and pop in a control unit. You might be able to use something like a, a computer. Uh, you go on Newegg and buy a fan controller for uh, computers and rig that up somehow. Unless the again, the humidifier may come with a switch, you know, that has some distance from the unit itself. 
you can probably find all the shit online. And we'll get into researching all that and finding what's what's best, or what's ideal, what's you know what the price when uh, we do that episode down the line. But great question. Yes, I do store cigars in Boveda bags long term, longer than you would think, and it works great. You know. Finally, we'll get to that one in a minute. Let's see how our cigar. So that was interesting. Anyway, we're into our last third, and I've always loved this cigar. You know, um, it's great. Everything is toned down. You know, at the beginning of the second third, we said it's getting more intense, coffee flavor, coffee bean type, you know, deepness, uh, you know, strong vegetal flavor, and everything since then has been toning down. We're into the last third, and right now it's very mellow. There's a slight earthy, almost papery taste, but not a bad, not like that's all it is, a bland papery taste. There's still a, a vegetal undertone. You still got little bits of spice, and it's a very mellow, calm, papery taste right now. There's some nice spice and vegetal flavor. Um, it's good, really good tobacco flavor. Good Nicaraguan tobacco. I love this cigar because it gives you spice, but it's really mellow. I, I like to find, I like spice. I like peppery spice. Mm. It's kind of like some like, almost some like notes of pepper, like white pepper, like that type of thing. Very, very good. Very good. Mm. See? And that was the beginning of the second third when it was more intense, and it kept calming down, calming down. And I, I just started getting into the last third, and it was at its lowest where it was getting this paper. And now, all of a sudden, I'm puffing it, and the flavor is picking back up. So I have a feeling that the beginning is what we said it was, and then starts picking up more intense at the end of the first third into the second third. Then starts mellowing down, mellowing down, mellowing down. And then at the last third, I feel like it's starting to pick up a lot again. I'm getting a lot more spice than usual right now, but... The spice never dies out in this cigar. It really, it's always lingering. Mm. The smoke is taking on more of a creamy texture. It's getting creamier. Intense vegetal flavor right now, like that deep broccoli type flavor with some white pepper. It's almost like a meal. It's really a delicious cigar. Uh, mm. So far, man, the, uh, the end of the first third, beginning of the second third, and now this part, the beginning, coming into the middle of the th last third, my favorite parts of this cigar. Vegetal, woody, it's got everything, peppery. Leaves a nice, nice taste in the mouth, and a, and, a, and a peppery, spicy taste. Very good. Let's do one last email. Nick Barbieri. Again, sorry for mispronouncing your name. First of all, Nick, before we do your email, I want to thank you. You know, you and a couple of other people have been great, leaving comments. You know, that's what makes this show. You know, I can't do it alone. You know, by you guys leaving comments and asking interesting questions and. You know, getting other people to ask questions and, and join in. and It's like a little club, you know? And I really uh, appreciate the fact that you participate as much as you do. Um, I hope some other people out there decide to, you know, start hitting the keyboard. And, and You can never ask a stupid question, you know? And as long as you're polite and friendly and, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun, you know? I think you'll have more fun if you participate, you know? If, you know, you smoke a cigar the same as me and you find something else in that cigar that I might not have mentioned, please mention it, you know. If you smoked a cigar and didn't find at all what I was talking about, you know, I want to hear from you. So, these videos and your love for cigars is your resume. Uh, if I was the owner or, or executive of a cigar company, a major cigar company, I would be seeking you out. Are you going to work at a uh, cigar store again? You know, that's like... First of all, it made me feel really good, because it's like, you know, a nice little ego boost right there. Uh, and like I said before, I did work at a shop for a long time, and I pride myself on my knowledge and what I've learned there. And the only reason I always, always learn more is because I never feel like I've learned enough, and I'm always looking for new cigar information. Uh, 
I really, yes, I do want to work at a cigar store again eventually. Um, but, you know, I'm older now. You know, I'm getting into my mid-30s. And, you know, I want to make more money. You know, right now, surprisingly enough, I just got a phone call for an interview somewhere tomorrow. So I'm going to see how that works out. Not a cigar shop. It's, uh, you know, and not the ideal job either. But it's something, it is what it is for now. Um, it's uh, it's building maintenance right now, you know. So, you know, whatever. And and it's it, that's more along the lines of what I want because you know my resume. They already called. They said we don't know you. Look overqualified. Look, I when I was working in the cigar shop, I finished college, you know, and and got you know degrees in computer science and and in business and and I uh, just don't feel like sitting behind a desk. You know, I'm not right. I'm not ready for that. You know, and I'm not gonna. I, I, I don't have to love what I'm doing, but I'm not going to do something I don't want to do. You know, it, it, that, there's no hell like that, you know, unless you have to. Unless you absolutely have to, which I, I was getting it. And luckily, I got an interview tomorrow somewhere. But I will, oh, I will constantly be looking for openings uh, at cigar shops. You know, they're far and few between a lot of the time. So, you know, hopefully, you know, if you know anybody, Nick, uh, you know, let me know, you know. Send me a personal email, and I'll tell you whereabouts. Uh, I don't like to say it out, you know, uh, for some people already know, but, you know, I don't need everybody who stops by knowing where, you know, I am. So, you know, send me a personal email, and I'll, I'll give you my information. And if you ever come up with anything, I'd be more than happy to know about it, you know. So, that's that. But I, I, I would love a job, preferably something like in a managerial position, at a cigar shop, or possibly even a, uh, to start out as a representative for a major cigar company. You know, representatives for people who don't know, what they do basically is stop in cigar shops and promote brands of cigars, or take orders, or, or whatever. You know, like everybody has a rep. Like, uh, for instance, uh, Ashton Cigars had a great rep. This guy was great. He would come by, drop off some of the cigars, you know, give us some of the newer cigars to check out, taste, see if we wanted to order any, talk to us about what's going on with the company. Make sure everything's all right with it. That's what a rep does. You know, they're basically like the, the PR man to the uh, to the shop. They're like a personal PR rep for the company to to the shops that they deal with. So I'd love that kind of job because that gets you in, into the company. And being that I have a degree in business as well, I could I would love to you know move up in a cigar company as uh, I have strength. My strengths business wise are in promoting and advertising. So that would be great. And also some financial stuff, but you know. So I do have the tools. I really do. It's just a matter of, of being in the right place at the right time. You know, knowing people and finding the right stuff. So anybody out there who wants to give me a shout out and let let other people know that hey, this guy's looking for this type of work, or if you know anybody, feel free to let me know. So thanks again, Nick. Uh, very nice email. And that is it for now, as far as viewer emails go. There are some other good ones, but we're getting pressed for time. And uh, we're going to work on the cigar a little bit. Like I said, I don't want these videos to be too, too long. And I already had to change a memory card, which means um, I'm way over. I'm going to have to cut a lot of the, the other stuff. But uh, I'm going to puff on this a little bit. i got to go run and get a haircut for my interview tomorrow. So let me just finish this guy up as I get ready to go. And before I do, I will give you a final report and rating on the... Have a go on. Uh, so we are nubbing right now, and mm, tasty, tasty, woody, vegetal, spicy, very good. Flavors run together a little at the end, but very good. Nice medium body right here. Maintains its overall, you know, though, you know, mildness. Just very, it's a medium body, but it doesn't, you know, there's no, no kind of all of a sudden like anything harsh or it's, it's disturbing the whole experience. Very, very good. Very good. So we're just going to finish up. I got a few more pulls and, uh, Let's give you the rating. And uh, again, one of my favorite, favorite 
morning cigars. Great morning cigar. Fantastic with a cup of coffee. Great. Little get the little. If you don't have a lot of time, the little juniors. Fantastic with a cup of coffee. This is one of my one of my few breakfast cigars of choice. Great cigar. And uh, fairly cool burning, even over here. I mean, you know, it's hot here, but smoke is staying, it's warm. It's not like hot. Sometimes smoke gets hot and it loses all its flavor. Still smokable. Very nice. It's spicy at the end. Picks you up, gets you going for the day, you know? So let's see what we got. Can't stop. And there you have it, folks. Our Cabaguan Guapo. Absolutely fantastic, mild to medium bodied cigar. Great for morning, after breakfast, before breakfast, or with a cup of coffee, however you want to do it. One of my favorite morning cigars. <clears throat> Overall, uh, we gave it a 7.75, which is a very, very good score in our little rating system that takes nine different attributes and gives them either a zero or one, breaking up, breaking them up by quarters. So we did quarters because 0.5 and 1 and 0 just wasn't really enough. It's still very simple in quarters. I think it's more simple than most rating systems. However, just to let you know, unlike most rating systems that stay within the 80 above range, ours really will drop cigars into like, you know, a 6.5. Five, six, it'll drop cigars wherever it needs to drop them. But in our rating system, a six is a very good cigar. You know, a seven is above average, and an eight is fantastic. A nine is nearly legendary, nearly flawless, and a ten is, you know, there really hardly are ever any tens. Ten is you found the ultimate cigar, you found your Excalibur. So our rating system is a little different. So, you know, I don't want any brands to be insulted if they got like a six, because six is just like a very good general cigar, you know, like a very good cigar in general that, that's nothing really fancy. But anyway, our Cabaguan got a 7.75. It got one, perfect ones in construction, draw, and burn. The appearance was 0.75, uh, but sometimes the, even that's relative. Pre-draw flavor was a 0.5. It was a little bit dull. A little bit dull. Uh, a little bit bland on the pre-draw. Overall flavor was a 1.5 out of 2, which is very good. Um, the bouquet, a 0.75. Very, very good. Complexity, a 0.5. You know, it's not an overly complex cigar. Um, and balance, a 0.75. It was very well balanced. There were a few places where it got a little bit, you know, dull and picked up right away again. So, it's kind of strange right there. But 7.75 overall which is a fantastic score, and uh, I really uh, urge you, if you like mild to medium bodied cigars and you like Nicaraguan cigars, or even if you don't, try this cigar. It's really good and definitely, definitely excellent in the morning with a cup of coffee. And that's about it. Dr. Joe here, checking out. See you tomorrow with our next Cuban.